Welcome to Nobilis Erotica, the best science fiction and fantasy erotica anthology podcast in the known universe. This month, het femdom pegging at the mechanical cross-country jackalope Olympics. This is episode 472. I am your host, Nobilis Reed. This episode of Nobilis Erotica is sponsored by the generous patronage of Nobilis Erotica listeners. To help out paying the authors and voices that create these stories, visit patreon.com slash nobilis. This month's patron-funded story is A Star in the Rough by Lex B. Griffin. Lex has been writing for the fandom circuit for 16 years under the usernames Chibi Neko and Nemo RPS. This story marks his first foray into the professional realm. For more of his original erotic fiction, please check out his Patreon at patreon.com slash Lex B. Griffin. You can find that link in the show notes. Our narrator is yours truly. Here we go. A Star in the Rough by Lex B. Griffin. Narrated by Nobilis Reed. The JK-10P was a machine quite unlike anything else on the market. Originally a bit of an experimental flop due to the number of oddities in its design, it was meant as an exciting, one-of-a-kind solo driving experience and configured to mimic a number of now-extinct Earth animals, none of which had ever been suitable for humans to ride in the first place. It was a commodity, but one that apparently no one wanted. That was just because the things were mind-bogglingly difficult to maneuver. It took months or years of training and practice to adapt to the rocking, leaping, lunging motions of the JK-10Ps, or jackalopes as they came to be known, used to get around. They were excellent for rocky terrain, and an expert rider could make them look elegant in the air. It's no wonder that they became a sport within just a decade of their invention, and just barely 15 years after the official league association formed, they were invited to the Olympics in New San Fran, coincidentally a city of even steeper hills than its namesake. Anton walked the course the day before the race, eyes wide and mouth agape. It wasn't even traversable on foot. It had large, rocky outcroppings and uneven straightaways. The jackalope would eat up the terrain for sure, but if the gravel shifted unexpectedly, Anton would have to pay careful attention to make sure he didn't wipe out at the worst possible moment. It was perfect. Just outside the city, where there weren't even roads to smooth the way, peaks and valleys, those pockets of straightaways could let you coax your metal beast into a loping sprint, hands gripped to the antler bars while your, while your body rode the writhing waves of your steed. Anton's excitement just to be here was only beaten by his nerves. He was new to the senior league, and this would be only his third appearance on the interstellar circuit. His anxiety was understandable, damn it. He'll do great out there tomorrow. Yulia, his girlfriend, said, back in their room, calm and patient. She was always the more level-headed of the two of them. Anton loved her utterly for her support. He did, but this time, the Olympics were a big deal. He was so early in his career, he could... Hush now, Yulia said again, patting a hand over Anton's shoulder. Listen to me. Anton did, blinking and turning to face Yulia, wrapped with attention. Tomorrow, you're going to go out there, and you're going to ride that monster you call Stella. Anton chuckled. He loved his girl, even if her paint job was a little retro. And you're going to make every jump, and you're going to wow everyone with your skill, and your attention to detail, and your focus. And you're going to be proud of that run. That's your only goal. It's your first appearance. You don't need to meddle right out of the gate. There'll be other chances. Yulia pressed a kiss to Anton's brow. And what if I do meddle? Anton teased, knowing Yulia was probably right. Hmm. Yulia pet a speculative hand down Anton's arm and across his belly. How about this? I'm going to stroke you now until you're just shy of coming. Anton hissed. Oh, fuck. He knew where this was going. And tomorrow, if you're a good boy and do as you're told... Then you'll get to come. Okay. Anton licked his lips, holding back anything more. Yulia wasn't done. Her fingers were sliding down under the bed covers to wrap around his rapidly growing erection, and she for sure had more to say. If you meddle, 
Yulia paused, as if she needed a moment to decide what reward she'd grant. Not only will I let you come, but I'll let you have your wicked way with me. And if I get gold? Anton asked, breathless and teasing, not believing for a second that he ever would. Yulia's hand was stroking firm fingertips to either side of his cock, pressing it down against his slim belly in tantalizing pulls. Then I'll have my wicked way with you. Oh, oh, fuck. Close, close. Anton yelped as his cock jumped and spat pre-cum, and he nearly came. Yulia just laughed, petting a soothing hand up around his shoulders, letting his cock bob and quiver under the sheets. So eager, she cooed, pressing a kiss to Anton's cheek. She leaned in close enough that he could feel the wetness between her own thighs press against his hip. My good boy. Anton groaned, and Yulia reached down again to continue teasing him. The next day was understandably busy, the throng of nerves tamped down under excitement and just a tiny bit of lingering lust. Yulia knew him so well. Anton cleaned Stella's already gleaming joints, polished her coat to a beautiful shine, a dozen tiny rituals to keep from thinking too hard about what he was about to do. His start was right in the middle of everyone else, at least. He wasn't first, wasn't last. If he did as Yulia ordered, no one would comment on him. His goal today, his first ever Olympic appearance, was just to keep his head and stay in the saddle. That he could do. That he'd been doing since he was a boy and barely big enough for the youth model. He and his jackalope were ready. There were a lot of rules and regulations about the kind of designs one could paint on their mount, but the current style was landscapes, long-forgotten vistas from old earth, or any countryside from dozens of countries and planets. Jackalopes in reds and blues and greens all loped to the starting line one after another before Anton's turn. Stella herself was a little bit different, a little older. She had a starscape on her flank. A jet-black base coat with just a hint of the red-green-purple of a nebula. And then over her back and rear, a galaxy of stars that, when ridden at night, really did glow. Anton guided Stella up latched his helmet to his racer uniform, leaned over her withers with a long, slow breath, and let the rest of the world fade away. He just listened to the steady thrum of the engine below him as he took hold of the antlers, put his feet in the stirrups. Three, two, one, go! And Anton went. Like the snap of a solar flare, Stella leapt out of the gate and down the slope before them, skidding and hopping over the goalposts to the first straightaway. The moment her metal paws made contact with the loose gravel, they were off. Anton was good over the more creative rocky terrains, but his specialty was the straightaways, the way he flattened himself to the metal chassis of his mount, the way the jackalope rocked against him as they ate up the distance. At the first turn, Anton was moving by reflex, turning his body and that of the creature under him to grip the terrain and press into the curves, getting almost horizontal in the deeper bends. Left, then right, then back to the left. The zipper back, that was slowing him down. Anton frowned and leapt. Stella responded in kind, dancing back and forth over the turns. Less time on the ground meant less time with friction tagging their speed, and then they were out the other end and into another straightaway. This one was longer than the first. It took nearly half as much time, or seemed to. The way Anton was plugged in, he couldn't really tell what his time was, but Yulia had told him not to worry about that, and he wouldn't. Anton jumped pillars of stone, hopped across the loose pebbles of a river, and into the third straightaway. There was one more. Back across the pillars of stone along the ground, weaving in and out of the spaces. They had to be larger than the eye of a needle, but they sure didn't feel it at this speed. Anton made it through made it to the final straightaway and put his chest down flat to his mount, felt the heat of the engine through his uniform as Stella thrust them forward. Anton panted down the straightaway, nearly there, so close. The roar of the crowd crashed over him in a wave as he crossed the final goalpost and slid into the finish line with a spray of rubble. He crossed the finish line without fucking up. Anton grinned. He'd done it. He'd done what Yulia asked. Before he could look to the crowd to find her, a trainer was waving him over towards a corridor presumably to get him out of the way of the next competitor. Inside, Anton hopped off and led his girl as he was directed. A mic was thrust into his face, and Anton blinked, confused as he was asked, "'How's it feel to be in first place?' 
I, sorry, what? Anton asked, blinking. It had been one of his best performances, sure, but he'd been behind several other more established racers. Surely he wasn't actually. You just beat the court's record by nearly three whole minutes, and currently hold the first place ranking by over four minutes. How do you feel? Anton blinked. Stunned, he breathed out, half a laugh. I, I was just focusing so hard on not falling off, I guess I really got into the zone. First place, and a course record. His idols ahead of him must have had some really bad runs. The rest of the interview went by in a bit of a breathless blur until the next competitor was ready to come through, and Anton was shuffled along, allowed to go cool down and do the rest of his post-race routines. First place! Who'd have thought? It was exciting, but surely it wouldn't last. Except it did. His four-minute lead disappeared pretty quickly. Other racers had seen his apparent improvements to the route and were hot on his heels by the end of the day. But when the final time was called, Anton still held the gold by 29 seconds flat. He couldn't believe it. Except he kind of had to. Between the medal ceremony and the celebration, Yulia had found him, but they had yet to escape to be by themselves. That hadn't stopped Yulia from dropping the filthiest promises into his ear every chance she got. I'm going to ride you so hard. You won't be fit to race for a week. And you're going to beg me for more, and I'm going to give it to you. Anton shivered at every one. He was glad that his uniform was tight and firm enough in the crotch to hide his reaction, but also dreaded how very constrained it felt, practically caged into his clothes. When they finally, finally got away, Anton wasted no time in reaching up for the zipper at his throat. No, wait, leave it on, Yulia said, pushing Anton back into the bed and climbing over his lap. Her skirts slid up her beautiful, perfect thighs, revealing sleek red satin when Yulia pulled them up even farther. Oh, fuck, Anton moaned, head dropping back against the mattress. Please let me out. I'm so hard and there's no room in these things. Please, please, he begged. You're so good for me, babe. So gorgeous when you beg. Yulia ran careful fingertips down over the hint of a bulge in Anton's uniform, so light he wouldn't have felt it, if not for just how sensitive he was. I could leave you in these, make you squirm. Anton whined and did in fact squirm, toes curling and chest heaving. He was ready to get off, beyond ready. Please, he gasped. Okay, okay. Yulia heaved a foe put upon sigh. If you're going to be so demanding about it. Anton laughed, breathless and grateful, as Yulia finally unzipped him, peeling apart the synth leather panels just enough to free his cock before unceremoniously pushing the satin of her panties to one side and sinking down around him. Oh, fuck! Oh, fuck! Anton hissed, grabbing onto Yulia's hips and thrusting up to meet her every roll and squeeze. Wet, Hot and utterly ravishing, dark hair framed Yulia's face and open mouth as Anton stared up at her in reverence. Don't come, Yulia ordered. I have plans for this. She reached between them and gave the base of his dick a gentle brush with her fingers as she rocked a steady circle with her hips. Not, Anton swallowed. Not sure I can, but I'll try, I'll try. Anton groaned. All right, I won't tease. Much, Yulia promised and picked up the pace. Her fingers by Anton's cock moved to her own clit, stroking a rapid zag across it as she chased her pleasure, just as Anton had chased gold. Gold! Earlier that day. The metal still heavy and perfect around his neck, resting on his bared chest. It didn't take long before Yulia was gasping and shaking on his cock, and it took every fiber of Anton's self-control to resist the urge to come. He could feel his balls clenching up, his abs tightening, and everything in him screaming to do it, but Yulia said no, so he would hold out, and he did. Just before it really was too much, Yulia sagged with a pleasant sigh and lifted off of him. Anton whimpered, Fuck! And now... Every word a gasp. 
Now I have my wicked way with you, Yulia grinned, a fiercely vicious smile that promised so much more. Oh, God. Yes, please, Anton asked, putting on the best innocent face he could manage, cheeks flushed and covered in sweat as he was. Yulia laughed, patting his hip in turn. All right, hot shot. Strip down and get on the bed. I want you on all fours for me. Anton did, scurrying so quickly he nearly fell in his haste to get undressed and spread his legs for Yulia to climb up behind him. Her fingers set a gentle pressure to his cleft until she pushed inside one inch at a time. The first slow moment of Anton's day, and it was torturously good, slick and stretched as he opened up for Yulia. Then he heard the buzz, faint under the sound of his own panting, but he didn't miss when Yulia pressed the vibrator up against his entrance. It was on the lowest setting, but with how much she'd worked him over, it was more than enough to have him shaking in sympathy. You ready for me? You've been so good. Did everything I asked and more? Yes. Yes, please, Yulia. Oh! Anton trembled as Yulia thrust inside him, pressing in and in until her hips pressed flush against his own skin, bare. Wait, what? How? It's new, Yulia chuckled. Simple design. There's a bulb I hold inside me. It's vibrating too, you know, getting me so good. I think I might actually come fucking you today, Anton. Think you'd like that? Have me ride you so hard I make myself come again? Anton laughed, desperate and happy. Fuck yeah, I like that. Go on then, fuck me. So good. Yulia pushed in again, every thrust full and fast and vibrating inside him. He'd already waited so long. I'm not going to last. That's okay, Yulia panted. Her hand slid down between them, doing something, probably stroking herself, and the image of that was so hot. Yulia's toy buried deep inside him, her hand on her clit as she rode him to orgasm. Anton shivered, fingers clenching on the sheets as his own orgasm began to overtake him. Oh, Yulia said behind him. Oh, Anton, that's... Yes, yes. Ah! Yulia stilled, but the vibrator didn't, milking them both for everything they were worth. Every trembling second of pleasure Anton had left in him shuddered out in perfection. Finally, Yulia pulled free and shut off the vibe. Anton rolled over and snuggled into her arms, smiling. Thank you, he said, pressing a kiss to her collarbone. This was perfect. You earned it. Yulia grinned back, wrapping her arms around him. Fucking gold, Anton. Only you. That thing you did at the zipbacks? People are going to be using the footage from that and training from now on. You shaved off so much time there. I was so slow, Anton huffed. I just did what felt natural. And you are so good at that, Yulia teased. Anton grinned. Think I'm going to do it again at the next Olympics? Yulia laughed, bright and airy, as she swatted his arm. Guess I'd better start planning your reward now, huh? And that's our story. If your desire for fantastic erotic audio fiction isn't sated, you can get more every month over on the Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash nobilis. You can join our newest patron, Hops, in enjoying monthly bonus fiction, which will very shortly be getting a final episode of the Transformation Fetish serial called My Wild Card. Supporters are also getting chapters of Hallowed Covenant, a BDSM erotic science fiction novel by Eunice Hung and Franklin Vo. Now is a great time to join the Patreon. Patrons are also granted access to the Discord server. Come join us. Let us know what you think. In addition, remember to pick up Monster Whisperer Second Class at your favorite ebook retailer or on the Riverdale Avenue Books website. Your support will help make sure this series continues. You have been listening to the Nobelis Erotica podcast. The music is composed and performed by Mass Relay. This podcast is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. Until next time, listen hard.